Hey what's happening guys, Chris here with another Battlefield 1 weapon guide. Today I'm going to be covering the Scout variants that were released as part of the Weapons Great update. So the M1917 Enfield Silenced, Carcano Patrol Carbine, Ross Mark III Infantry and the Type 38 Arasaka Patrol. It's going to be pretty similar to my last video that delved into the stats and characteristics of the Assault variants that also came along in the Weapons Great update. So if you've not seen that one yet, I recommend checking it out too. But I'm going to be giving you all the juicy information on those newer Scout variants this time around and comparing them with the other weapons. So hopefully you'll get a good understanding on what makes them different and whether or not they're going to fit in with your playstyle. So the first variant I'm going to run over is the M1917 Enfield Silenced, one of the most unique weapons, not just from the update, but in the whole game, down to it being one of the only guns to have a silencer at the end of its barrel. And the fact that it's essentially a sniper rifle with a high powered scope makes this variant all the more interesting. But believe it or not, that silencer doesn't actually do very much, as firing off guns in Battlefield 1 doesn't make you pop up on the minimap like in past games, where a silencer would have prevented this. And the only benefit you're going to gain from it is a slightly reduced amount of muzzle flash when you shoot the gun off, and obviously less sound too. And of course the fact that it just feels really bloody satisfying to use for some reason. The reduced muzzle flash might help to hide your location to a certain degree, making it slightly harder for enemies to pinpoint your location. Though I guess with the gun having a long range scope that emits glare, this is a bit of a giveaway that makes the flash hiding capabilities of the silencer a little bit useless in a lot of situations. Having a suppressor equipped also takes away your ability to use a bayonet, and it also means that you can't use a bipod either. But that decreased sound might help you out a bit more so when a nearby enemy is running around looking for their next kill as an unsilenced blast from a normal scout weapon would be enough to give your position away to said enemy. But the silencer definitely helps to make you less noticeable, as you're not going to be traceable to an exact location due to the gun firing away. A lot of good players in Battlefield 1 use audio cues and sound to track down nearby targets and use it to their advantage, mainly due to the fact that the minimap is less useful than in the past games. So taking that element away from them by having a suppressor attached is a pretty good bonus, despite it not actually doing anything statistically. Because it doesn't affect stats, this means that the gun's muzzle velocity doesn't drop down lower than the Enfield's infantry variant, as it's going to be the same, with its rounds travelling through the air at the speed of 820 meters per second, which is still pretty quick. And so this kind of goes against the whole silencer rules in other Battlefield games, where it dropped the speed of your bullets and generally made guns a bit harder to use, due to having to lead targets more to account for that change. The silence variant of the Enfield has a lot of similar stats to the infantry too, functioning in a very similar way. Though there are a couple of tiny tweaks to its recoil decrease rate, separating the two variants slightly. Adding a scope to that silence variant has taken away the quicker recovery rate, meaning that the gun won't reset back to its original firing position quite as quickly after each shot. But this is hardly anything to massively dampen the gun's usability, as that faster recoil and spread recovery rate isn't really too important anyway, due to the characteristics of the gun itself. The M1917 Enfield is a long range sniping machine at heart and that extra zoom provided by that scope is going to make it much more suitable over those further distances, allowing it to do what it was designed to do in the game a lot better. The short range dying sights on the infantry variant might be more useful for closer range gunfights, but due to the Enfield's sweet spot and damage model giving the biggest impact over long distances, this makes the scope an ideal fit, complementing the weapon's strengths better. As for the Carcano Patrol Carbine, this is another variant that's been given a scope, replacing the use of iron sights, and so it's also going to give you a clearer view of your targets ahead, letting you zoom in even more. It's not got a high powered scope like the Enfield Silenced, making it more suitable for medium ranges, and it also brings along some statistical changes that affects the gun's spread. The Carcano Patrol Carbine has half the aim down sights base spread as the standard variant when you're moving around, so it's going to work in a similar way to some of the other Carbine variants in the game making shots a bit more accurate when you're strafing around to get on target, due to the base spread not being affected quite as much. It's still going to be a better idea to stand still when you're lining that crosshair up with an enemy player, as your bullets are much more likely to land on target if you do, as there's literally no spread at all when you're stationary. But if you do need to move, whether to make yourself a harder target to snipe or help to position your sights up with your opponent, then this lower ADS spread when moving might possibly help you out a bit. However, the Patrol Carbine variant does have a slower spread recovery rate as a trade-off, so the standard variant's going to recover from spread a little bit faster after each shot, in a similar way to an infantry variant, and so this probably makes it more ideal for getting back on target a tad quicker for landing follow-up shots on players weakened by your first bullet. 
with the Gargano M91 being a weapon best designed for closer to medium ranges, and more suited for killing quickly by firing consecutive shots at an enemy, having to unscope after every shot is something that makes the gun a bit tricky to use at times, as you'll need to reacquire your target after each pull of the trigger, and line your sights back up with them again to land that second killing blow. This can often seem like an easier thing to do with the standard variant, especially at those medium ranges which is where the gun performs best mainly due to the fact that you don't have to adjust the iron sights too much to line them back up with your target, and because the weapon isn't really designed for long distances, with it having a lower than average bullet velocity and weak damage output over range, making it a less consistent gun that's harder to use, having that scope with extra zoom doesn't really benefit you all that much, and can actually go against the gun's effectiveness at times, as you won't be able to take advantage of the Carcano's rapid fire rate quite as well, having to unscope and zoom back in after each shot. The gun's high rate of fire and quick two-bullet kills is one of the main factors that makes the Carcano so appealing in the first place, but having that scope attached doesn't really allow you to benefit from said fire rate quite as well, so in a way it kind of takes away one of the main perks of the weapon and replaces it with an attachment that isn't really needed, as targets in the distance won't take as much damage from your Carcano rounds, with the gun not even being able to kill with a headshot at those long ranges, plus that lower muzzle velocity will also seem more exaggerated too so you'll need to lead enemy movements more, generally making it a harder scout variant to use for its intended mid-range role. The patrol variant gives you a clearer view of what's ahead, but it's probably not enough to make it shine over the standard variant, which is usually better at doing what it was designed to do. Next up is the Ross Mark III Infantry, something that a hell of a lot of fans really wanted to be in the game ever since they got hold of that Marksman variant. The infantry has very similar stats to the marksman and functions in the same kind of way, as you'd probably assume, but instead of having that mid-range scope, you'll be using the Ross Rifle's iron sights instead, which are actually pretty good and quite easy to aim with. It also brings along a couple of minor statistical benefits too, so although you'll be sacrificing that scope, which could give you a bit of a clearer view of your targets in the distance, perhaps making it easier to line up headshots with, the infantry variant's got faster spread and recoil recovery rates letting you get back on target a bit quicker with better results when firing multiple shots. The Marksman variant doesn't actually offer any statistical advantage over the Infantry variant, but the scope might make it a more preferable choice for dealing with enemies over longer ranges and taking on other scout players with a higher degree of accuracy. The Ross Mark III rifle is best suited for medium range gunfights, due to it being stronger here, dealing a higher amount of damage, though it can still act as a worthy long distance sniper rifle too with its fire rate being higher than average and its bullet speed being fast enough for the gun to seem usable at range, so some players might still prefer having a marksman scope attached, catering for those long distance sniper showdowns a tad better. However, the infantry variant might seem like a more ideal option to use, boosting the rifle's effectiveness specifically over those closer to medium ranges, pretty much complementing the gun's stats and allowing the weapon to fulfil its role in the game a little bit better. Because the Ross Mark III is less of a long range sniper machine and more of an offensive and fairly aggressive rifle, being most effective closer to the front lines, having those faster recoil and spread decrease stats combined with those closer ranged iron sights might make it feel more suitable for medium distances, as you won't need to adjust your aim and lead targets quite as much with the iron sights, often making them feel like a better fit for taking down moving targets quickly and effectively. This is further complemented by the rifle's straight pull bolt, allowing you to stay scoped in in between firing letting you keep your sights locked on target for easy follow-up shots, and in a way the Ross Mark III Infantry plays in a similar way to the fan favourite Gewehr M95 Infantry for this reason, only with it having a slightly slower fire rate and longer reloads, but also being able to kill in just one shot between 40 and 75 metres, packing even more of a punch over those mid-ranges like the SMLE. It's a weapon variant that a lot of people really wanted, due to infantry variants generally being more suitable for close to mid-range battles and with the Ross Mark III having a lot of attributes that make it excel over those medium ranges, it just makes sense to put the two together, making the Ross Mark III a really deadly infantry rifle that can destroy enemies quickly within its optimal range. So the last scout variant in the weapons great update is the Type 38 Arasaka Patrol, which once again functions in almost the exact same way statistically as its infantry variant counterpart, apart from a couple of tweaks to its spread and recoil stats. But just because it doesn't have a load of stat changes and differences doesn't mean it's going to feel the same to use, as that longer range patrol scope gives you a few other benefits over the infantry variant, perhaps making it a bit more suitable further away. Other than giving you extra zoom, which can come in handy for landing headshots easier on players in the distance, that patrol scope works in a similar way to an optical sight, reducing the gun's aim down sight's base spread when you're moving by half, 
so if you strafe it around to get your scope lined up with an enemy player, you'll be less likely to miss due to spread getting in the way. Though as you'd probably expect, adding that scope also means you'll be sacrificing a few other things, such as the gun's ability to recover from recoil and spread faster after each shot, some for the infantry variants are well known for doing. This might make it a bit less effective for landing multiple shots quickly, especially with you having to keep zooming in and out whilst unscoping to chamber the next round, and because the Arasaka is a gun that excels in closer range fights, due to its sweet spot zone starting fairly early at just 30 meters, you'll normally be at more of a risk being nearer to all the action and danger. Getting those hard hitting shots out quickly is important for your survival, and with the infantry variant being a bit more reliable for doing this with its faster recoil recovery rates, means that having a scope instead can sometimes put you at a slight disadvantage within those closer ranges when compared. Yarasaka is a close to medium range gun, and those iron sights are pretty good for close to medium ranges, though a lot of players might prefer having a scope attached with the patrol variant, to give them more of a visual advantage for landing shots more accurately over range, outside of the gun's optimal zone where it's typically used more so. It's not exactly a high powered scope, so it's still very usable at those closer distances, and will probably give you a clearer view of targets at mid ranges too, and if you're taking on another sniper across the map, the patrol variant will probably give you more of a chance to line up a headshot, basically extending the gun's functionality beyond the ranges that it's normally used for. The patrol variant definitely feels like more of a subjective choice, down to it really coming down to a player's preference on whether a scope really enhances the Arasaka's usability. And considering it's a gun that's mainly used offensively, the infantry variant might seem like a more ideal pick, though the patrol can still be a very deadly variant to use for taking on players at mid ranges, with that clear of view. So that's pretty much it for another video, hope you enjoyed the guide and found it useful, give me a like if you did, and if you've not already seen my guide on the 4 assault variants that also came along in the weapons crate update, then I'd suggest checking that one out too. Subscribe for more Battlefield content coming soon, and I'll see you in our next episode.